to everyone. Good evening and happy Sabbath. It's been uh, quite some time since we've been together, and I'm thankful to God and his ways that he has kept all of you and continue to work in your hearts as he is continually working upon mine. And I'm thankful for the study that we are having this evening. I cannot begin to tell you how important this study is. There are many subjects that are very good to know, very important to know, and we need to know. But brothers and sisters, whether it's having a walk with Jesus and knowing who he is as a personal savior, whether it's preparation for the coming crisis, no matter what topic might be your favorite, if you do not know how to study the Bible, you will find that somewhere along the line in your Christian experience, you're going to find yourself running into a wall of which you know not how to get through. And therefore, what we're going to study throughout this weekend, tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday morning, is we are going to study how to study the Bible. It is a most important subject. In fact, I want, to, I want to show you an area of significance of how important it is to know how to study the scripture. And I'm going to invite you to turn your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 5. James, chapter 5. And James, chapter 5, talks about things that's taking place presently in this world. And I want you to see how all this ties in to the importance of how to study the Bible. If I were to ask individuals, why is it so important to study the Bible? I mean, you know, you get a lot of different answers, but I want to share something with you that most times is not considered. And if you're at the book of James chapter 5, I'm going to ask that you say amen. amen. Let us reverently bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, as we embrace your words, we're trusting that the power of your Holy Spirit will guide us and you give us wisdom, that you'll show us, Lord God, the wondrous things that are contained in your holy book. May you teach us truth, open our eyes, and we thank you in advance for your blessings. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. In James chapter 5, I want you to notice what the Bible says. We're going to start at verse 1. In fact, we can read it together. We're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to take it to verse 6. James chapter 5, starting at verse 1, and we're going to take it to verse 6. I am reading from a King James Version, and the Bible says... Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Why did this happen? It says, you have heaped treasure together for the last days. Today we are seeing a situation where it seems like the rich are getting richer and the poor are truly getting poorer. And it seems like the middle class that once existed is becoming more and more obsolete. And if we plan on continuing in existence, we are sooner or later going to fall into one of these groups, either the rich or the poor. And here it is that as the Bible brings this out, it talks about what was the motivation behind these rich men who were doing a lot of these wicked things. It says they have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now notice what it goes on to say in verse 4. It says, behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. And that word Sabbath does not mean Sabbath, it means armies. It says, you have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. This is a very, very bad climate, brothers and sisters, that this would be a reality of things that's taking place today. But we see within the labor unions, we're seeing throughout the situations of unemployment, banks failing, and all of the different financial issues in the economy and the direction that it's going, we see that many of these things that we're reading right here in James chapter 5 are actually a reality. Now here's what's interesting. What is God's counsel to you and I as we behold this reality taking place in our world today in 2009? Verse 7, the Bible says, be what? Patient, 
Therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. And then God transitions and gives us an example of husbandry. And he says, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has what kind of patience? Long patience for it until he receives something. What is it that he receives? The early and the latter rain. You see, the true solution to preparation for the coming crisis, the true solution for preparation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is founded upon two experiences that you and I must have. We must receive and experience first the early rain and then the latter rain. Now, this is very significant because the greatest need of God's people today is to receive the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit through the early rain and then through the latter rain. It's the greatest experience. It should be our focus. When you read Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1, the Bible literally says, ask for the rain. I mean, literally, think about it. The Bible, doesn't, does not the Bible say, you have not because you ask not? How many of us on a daily basis are asking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through the early and the latter rain? How many of us are doing that? Very few. And we wonder, why am I so weak? Why is it that I have so much Bible knowledge, but I have so much weakness in my experience that I know not how to live and to walk in victory in Jesus' name? Why is that? Because we're lacking something. And what we're lacking is the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit through the early and the latter rain. This is the greatest preparation that you and I could have for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to show you something. I want you to see how this ties in so beautifully. I want you to see that as much as it is true that we need the experience of the early and the latter rain outpouring of God's spirit, the question is this. What prepared the disciples to receive the early rain? On the day of Pentecost, you know the story in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, we know that the early rain fell. It fell upon the disciples. They received the outpouring of God's Spirit, and they did mighty works in the name of the Lord. Amen? The question is this. What prepared them? Because whatever prepared the disciples to experience the outpouring of God's Spirit is going to be the very same thing that's going to prepare you and I to receive the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. So what I want you to do now is turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 24. In the book of Luke chapter 24, I want you to see a most amazing dynamic that God shows us in the 24th chapter of Luke as we look at what was it that prepared. Because most times when we think of the things or the experience that the disciples had that prepared them for the outpouring of God's spirit, we typically are thinking about the upper room. Is that right? We usually think about the upper room when they all came up there together and they started to put away their differences and so on. And they spent some time up there in great prayer, confession and the searching of hearts. And as a result of that, you know the story. The Bible tells us eventually, boom, there came the Holy Spirit falling down upon them in cloven tongues of fire. But I want you to see that there was an experience that took place before the upper room that prepared them for the upper room that they might receive the outpouring of God's spirit. And it's found right here in the book of Luke, chapter 24. And if you're there, I'm going to ask that you say amen. amen. 